Hey guys and girls, my name is Dan, welcome back to The Forge. In this episode of Trust Me, I'm a blacksmith. Let's talk about why climate change and the way that we deal with climate change could signal the end of the hobby blacksmith. I, like many other blacksmiths around the world, use solid fuels or a gas type fuel um, in order to create a heat source to get my work hot. Almost all of these heat sources create CO2. CO2 is said to be one of the contributing factors for global warming or climate change. A potential um, way to deal with climate change is to ban the use of CO2 emitting fuels. So what does this mean for the hobbyist blacksmith? Well, if we ban, if this does happen and we do ban the use of CO2 producing fuels, you won't be allowed to burn them at your, in your backyard or your small workshop. So this video is to address that issue, talk talk just briefly about the subject and then go on to give some alternatives and potentially a, an idea that I've had in order to help keep the blacksmithing community alive. One aspect of uh, blacksmithing that has really helped it spiral into the creative, um, the sort of more creative home gamer style um, of hobby is the fact that it is super accessible. We've been doing it for hundreds of years. Um, forging, getting material hot, putting metal in that, in that heat source and hitting it with a hammer, be that steel or copper or whatever, we have been doing that for a very long time and I don't think it's going to change, I think it's here to stay. But if they ban fossil fuels, it will make the accessibility of that heat source, um, not just fossil fuels, or CO2 producing fuels, that will make it very hard for people at home to get into the hobby. So, my questions or my ideas and thoughts that I'd like to share with you guys and get some feedback on um, cover three uh, elements. The first is, will there be special scenarios where people like myself, potentially, who have a livelihood where we use traditional methods still be allowed to burn CO2? And will that come with consequences, i.e. fines, uh, licenses, uh, some sort of equipment in order to catch the CO2 that's being emitted, so on and so forth. Um, I'd love to know what you guys think. Do you think because uh, of certain crafts they will still be allowed to do what they do? Potentially ceramics and also glass blowing. These are crafts that rely very heavily on, on the use of um, uh, CO2 emitting fuels. Secondly, are there alternatives that I don't know about? Um, hydrogen is one alternative. Um, I, am, I, I will explore that at a later date, but I don't want to talk about this in this particular video. But are there any alternatives that you guys know about? And thirdly, the last one that I'd like to talk about, our current options, our current alternatives. Um, I can think of two that are currently being used and a third option that could be viable, but I don't necessarily know if it is viable. Our first is arc. I can see in the future a lot of people getting batteries, putting metal across two contactors on a battery and then whacking the hell out of it. Um, that seems like probably the easiest accessible. It's basically arc is where you're using the electricity from at somewhere to cross between an item, therefore turning that piece of metal into a resistor. That resistor creates heat. Um, and therefore you can then forge that object. It is used in industry, it's used in two ways. They do spot heating, uh, where, is, where, where basically you use an arc, you create heat in an area and then you can forge that object. Uh, and secondly, uh, they use it in arc furnaces or, or uh, vacuum arc crucibles and so on to make molten material. It's very dangerous, it's very expensive. Um, I don't recommend you start sticking metal across batteries. Batteries have the tendency to explode um, so there are options there, um, but I don't know whether or not that is the best option. It will mark your work and also uh, it, it has to be between two points. So um, if you're trying to heat a large area, it can take a lot longer to heat. You could even damage your work, so on and so forth. So I don't know whether or not arc is a great alternative. Then there's induction. Induction is also used very heavily in industry and it's filtering down into the hobby market, the craft market. Uh, I know that there are blacksmiths out there, out there in the world, that use um, induction heating systems in order to create um, a heat source. But the problem with those, again, is they're very specific areas, the equipment's very expensive, it's also very delicate, uh, you need cooling systems, you need lots of different types of coils. Anyway, I think currently, as an option, again, that, that, that is not necessarily going to filter down into the home gamers market. It's probably something that's going to stay more in sort of the professional, semi-professional, industrial area. 
and the third. Now, this is something that I've been thinking about for a little while. I spoke to a local company, or local, Stoke on Trent at least, anyway, local to the UK, uh, um, and they produce um, and make kilns, and these kilns are um, electric kilns, and I was speaking to them about what sort of processes and abilities that you can get out of these electric kilns and whether or not they could work. My three main questions before I even got anywhere, before I even said it was a non-starter was A, firstly, um, was it safe? Because it's like making a toaster. In my head we had these open coils, it was like having a toaster where you were just putting metal inside that you could electrocute yourself with. Could it be made safe? Secondly, would it be efficient? Um, is it going to be ridiculously expensive to run uh, for eight hours a day, every day? And then lastly, um, could it do it? Could it get material to the temperature that we require? All three questions of these were answered by um, a really nice gentleman that I spoke to. Thank you, Tony. I doubt you'll ever watch this video, but thank you, Tony, for answering my questions. All of these uh, questions were answered, and they seem to have acceptable uh, answers that attach to the questions. Safety. There are kilns that run certain types of coils that are either ceramic or that they are silicon protected uh, and they can be touched and will not electrocute you. They'll burn you if they're on, but they won't electrocute you. That's the first. So safety isn't necessarily an issue. Uh, they are, they, or they can be made safe. Would they be expensive to run? The answer is if you have them flat out for eight hours a day, they are going to cost somewhere in the region, and i sorry this is going to be in uh, English money, but they're going to be in somewhere in the region of um, 10 to 15 pounds to run a day. And thirdly, can they do it? Well the answer is yes, these coils can get up to about 1300 degrees Celsius, I'll put Fahrenheit just here. Now, um, that means that there is a potential to make this work. So, a traditional looking, well I say traditional, a, a common looking uh, furnace, uh, forge, gas forge, without the gas but with the coils. Imagine that energy is something that we have in abundance and that we can use it um, in this scenario. Um, this is potentially an option that will give us the ability to create a heat source that doesn't, uh, that doesn't rely on the CO2 burning, uh, uh, burning fuel or creating fuel uh, in the workshop and it's something that you will be able to buy and plug into the wall for a reasonably expensive price. Um, the other thing is, uh, I was talking to the guys there, um, I need to speak to their, their top man that does actually design their kilns to see whether or not something can be made, and it's something that I'm really keen to explore. Uh, I'd love to know your thoughts on this uh, as well, so please in the comments tell me what you think about this. But um, I, was, uh, I was talking to the guy and um, they also put these control units and thermal couplings on their coils so that they can control the temperature. So basically what you will have is a heat source that lifts the kiln up to the temperature that you tell it to get to. It will raise the temperature up and then once it gets to that temperature it will cut it off and once it drops to a parameter it will reheat. So it's not always on all the time but it can also be lowered in temperature to reasonable ranges. So it can, if you want to do heat treatment, for example, it can very accurately, within five degrees, it can very accurately say what temperature it is for your initial quenching processes, so for your hardening processes, and then again for your tempering processes. So, is there an alternative that potentially could be made for the home gamer who wants to make hammers and knives and tongs and bits and bobs like that? I think there is. I think electricity could provide that answer and some, an object that could potentially have um, a, an entrance that's somewhere in the region of six, six inches by four inches. And the length, I don't know whether or not the length is going to be an issue either. You just add more coils, I assume, that would obviously cause more expense. But producing something which a lot of people use on a day-to-day -day basis, a kiln, uh, sorry, a forge that can take maybe up to four four blanks, maybe maybe only two blanks, but hammer blanks or maybe a knife blank um, that can then be used reliably to get your metal to a temperature is potentially an option. That's everything I wanted to talk about in this video. Let me know what you thought of what I'm saying, what I've said. Let me know about if there's any alternatives. Let me know whether or not you think there'll be special, special rules put into place for people like me, like blacksmiths. Um, and also let me know uh, what you thought of the electric forge idea. Um, I'd love to know what you guys think. I am genuinely looking into this topic. It is going to be quite expensive to buy the heating 
coils to start with. I think we're looking somewhere in the region of four to five hundred pounds, but potentially I think some of the burners that are on the market can be anywhere between 150 to 200 pounds each. So if you're running two of those and you're getting the same results, maybe, I don't know. I don't know if this is even gonna work. So bear with me, I'd love to know some feedback. That would be great in the comments for sure. Um, and I think that's everything. So thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, remember to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And if you are a subscriber, remember to ring that bell for notifications because it will tell you every time I make a video. Um, that's everything. So thank you for joining me. Um, oh yeah, chuck your comments down below. Please, 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 let's have a conversation about this. I'd love to know what you think. Oh, if you're talking about climate change, this wasn't a video about climate change. This was a video about the consequences of climate change if they happen. It's a hypothetical. So uh, I, don't, I don't particularly want to hear all the load of nonsense about climate change and how I was wrong about something to do with climate change. I don't care. Um, it, or if you don't believe climate change is this. I don't care topic. Tell me what you think. I want to have this discussion. I think it's a good discussion to have. That's everything. Thank you for joining me. I'll leave a link up here to a video where I did a thing. This is another video where I did something else. This here is um, my Patreon. Great way to support the channel. And down here is the subscribe button. Thank you for joining me, guys. See you later. Bye-bye.